Okay. Ow. Gotta get that timing down. Okay. Yeah. Got a six staff though, bro. Ah. Uh. Ah, oh, God, no. Hello, hello, everybody. My name is Nuke Fox, and welcome back to Ocarina of Time. I made it back to the Temple of Time here. We're gonna see if I can go back to being a young Link. Sheik, can I use the pedestal now? What? So you met me in the forest to teach me the minuet of forest, and now you're just sitting here again. Sheik. Why, why did you leave? And then come back. Why teach me the minuet of forest if I can't go back to being kid Link? What good does that do? Like, unless there's a gold Skotala I left in the, in the temple, why would I ever need this? A up, left, right, left, right. Okay. Hold on. I thought I pressed the wrong button for a second. Like, what? Because for the most part, when you finish a dungeon, if you get all the Skulltullas, there's no reason to go back to the dungeon. Not like there's a... Here, you don't... Stop, stop calling me. Like, there's no... Like, and the reason why I'm, 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 I'm a little bit perturbed about it is because I know I'm gonna forget to go back and, and get... The Scarecrow song. There's a very high probability of me forgetting to go back and get the Scarecrow song. I know me. I've done crap like that before. Can you, can you stop? I, 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 just... Get out of my way. Thank you. I'm, so I'm sorry, it's a very aggressive start to the video. Wow, there's really not a lot of reach on this thing, is there? I'm just like, I just want to do the thing so I don't forget that I can get the things I need. Hello, Skotola. I see you. We'll deal with you in a moment. Like if. Kind of figured after she showed up in the forest to teach me a song, he would go away from the, the Temple of Time, but I guess I guess not. Or at least, you know, teach me the Prelude of Light. The Prelude of Light actually makes sense. Whatever, whatever. I'm done. I'm done busting about it. We're in the Forest Temple. We got stuff to do. Put the big boy pants on, Link. Let's go. All right. I'm already semi-exhausted because as soon as I recorded the last video, I had to edit it and upload it and all, and it took like. You know, editing takes a while, rendering takes took over an hour. I spent all that time on that, and now I'm just like, I want a nap. <laughs> or not, 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 if not a nap, at least lunch, you know? <laughs> and I was like, you know what, if I eat lunch now, I won't, I won't finish this, so. I won't record again, I should say. So, here we go. Like, again, I know me. I've seen me do it. <laughs> My table there. Sorry about that. Excuse me, skull salt. So I don't. I, I remember what I have to do in this dungeon vaguely. I don't fully remember this dungeon. Anything beyond what I've already done is at the point where I not only do I not remember it, but it's not simple enough for me to just kind of go right through it. Even in Jabu Jabu's belly, I had some times where I was just like, oh, that's what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> Despite the fact that I've honestly played through that dungeon like three or four times in my life. I heard some skittering. 
Might be a Sculptola in here. There are arrows painted on the floor. Oh, I think I think that's a bubble I'm hearing. I don't think that's a Sculptola. block. I like how Link can move these big blocks without, like, the silver gauntlets. <laughs> like, they're just at that point where they're just small enough that he can actually move them. Okay. Uh... I would like to not grab it. I would like to climb. I guess I have to grab it then. <laughs> Oh, I thought that's where to, that was where it needed to be. I am sorry. There we go. Checking every direction, making sure. Hey, look, more puzzle. More puzzle, not puzzle. <laughs> It's a little more puzzly than I thought because I can't can't quite uh, pull that all the way out. Okay, and it'll teach me to open my mouth. <laughs> huh? I see. Uh, no, I don't have a map yet. But does that tell me anything? It does not. Cool. Hmm. Uh. Okay. Death more of a puzzle here than I had originally thought. Wander around a little bit here. Making sure I didn't miss anything. It's kind of dark in this temple. At least, at least. To me, to my eyes, especially like in the in the corners here, it's a little hard to see. My eyes are bad, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. I I don't think I'm supposed to come in this room yet. Excuse me. Yes, welcome to the forest temple. You're an adult now. Things are much harder. Here's an enemy from level one. <laughs> I can get rid of this. Why I was going at him with the <laughs> with the hook shot. Go. Well, that's not what I wanted to do at all. Link. There you are. Uh, oh. Another Skulltola up there. I don't think I can hit him without the bow and arrow. Yeah, okay, I can't go up that way yet then. I probably could kind of cheese my way past him, but I don't want to try it. One of those, if I try it, I might end up being here all afternoon. And that won't be good for anybody. Okay. Great, I'm here now. For what purpose? That's hanging down like that's something I could grab onto, but I suppose it isn't. Fantabulous. Okay. Still trying to get the lay of the land here. It's funny, weirdly enough, I felt a little bit more sure about where I was going in Twilight Princess, comparatively. And it had been just as long about since I had played Twilight Princess. Oh, 
Oh, hi! Oh, oh, that's fun. Oh, that's also fun. Hi, Stalfos. Ow. That guy's hurt. Ow. Okay, the crash stabbing does not work when there's two of you. Okay. Trying to see if I can actually stun him with this. I no, probably can't, but... No mechanic I always thought was neat, now that I'm thinking about it, was in uh, Twilight Princess. Was in Twilight Princess? The, um... Certain Lizalfos had shields that you could hook shot off. Work here? It does not. Wishful thinking. Okay, now I can probably crouch down. Ah, yeah, it works very well against one of you. It's a, it's a skill I have yet to master. It seems like a useful skill, but I haven't mastered it yet. Yeah, okay. It reminds me of, like, using a lance in Monster Hunter and just doing, like, the, sh the guard stab, but at a much faster rate. <laughs> yeah, I got a key. Very. 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 There we go. <laughs> Fairy's hitbox was a little bit difficult there. Okay. This way, it can't go that way. So many ways I can go. Didn't even drop me anything. I see how you are. Oh, this is the entrance. I don't want to be in the entrance. Pardon me. They spawn quick, don't they? Uh, alright then. West and E and West East. <laughs> I can't go east from here. Can't. I need the bow to go through there. Go north. I haven't gone north yet. I don't think. No, I did. I did go this way. This was where I got the fought the Stalfos. So the only things left are either I need to do something with that block that I didn't do. Or there's some way to go to actually pro progress here. Like, I have to try to go through this. Link. Hit the thing you're supposed to hit. Thank you, buddy. Nut. I think I'm just supposed to kind of book it past that skull tall. Okay. My, that wasn't the easiest treasure chest ever. <laughs> what a guardian you've chosen for this room. Okay, now I got the map and kind of get an idea of where we're going here. Okay, I got four floors. I know the boss is on B2, I think. 
I definitely, I definitely remember going, having to go down from that main room. I'm, I'm not gonna Z target shoot you. I'm just gonna shoot you. The Z target shot would, if memory serves, not do very well for me. Yeah, okay, here we go. That's what I was supposed to do. I was supposed to book it past that Skulltella. Okay, let's go down this way. I hear, I hear more Skulltella. I heard, a, I heard another Scritch Scritch. Oh, there it is. I saw that coming and I chose to do absolutely nothing about it. Yeah, I probably need Scarecrow Song to get over there. Or the long shot. Just to kind of hit the skull toll from there. Can I? I can't. Okay. It's fine. Uh, there's nowhere to me to jump down to from there. Okay, great! Another thing I have to come back to after I get the Scarecrow Song. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Sheik. Could have had that by now, but no. Blame Sheik for my own forgetting to do it before I... Before I grabbed the Master Sword. I'm not gonna open... I think that treasure chest just has, like, either rupees or a heart in it or something. What? Okay, it probably has a key in it then, because otherwise there's no... There was no point to that, otherwise. Alright, great. I have two keys, and I don't know where to use them. <laughs> like, cool, I have keys. What do? I don't know. Uh, I'm 17 minutes into this episode, and oh boy, <laughs> I could see a lot more episode coming. I feel like I've made no progress. That's not sure you have keys. Keys that I don't know what to do with. <laughs> uh, okay. So the northeast leads down a hall that comes back around to the to the east. Can I go in the northeast door? No. I didn't go in the northeast door. Why is it highlighted blue? Oh, from because I was up on the second floor of it. That's kind of dumb, but whatever. I am confusion. This is the right hallway. This is not the right hallway. It's so hard for me to tell, like, which way is the way... Without the compass to show me my little, uh, arrow on the map, it's hard to tell which way I'm going. Back this way. Okay, can I go up there somehow? The answer would appear to be no. Okay. Um, is there like a lens of truth thing somewhere? No, that can't be right. I'm, I'm thinking like of an invisible wall. Like a wall you can just walk through. Invisible wall. Like a a false wall, excuse me. But that, that's, that's, a, that's a shadow temple thing. They're not going to have that in the forest temple. As far as I'm aware. There's some like secret somewhere. Something I'm supposed to hook shot onto, maybe? I feel dumb because I've done this before. There's a ladder here. <laughs> like, I, 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 as, a, as a teenager, I've done this before. I won't say as a child because I was like 14, but I've, I've done this before.
Yeah, I guess I didn't really waste time running around. I got the keys. One could potentially argue that was mildly more efficient than doing it the way I was doing before, just going here pushing the blocks. But uh, I won't make that argument <laughs> because it's probably vol objectively false. Anyway. Here. And that bubble laughing at me. Over this way. Nope, that's just the way back down. I love the way bubbles just float around and kind of evil laugh at themselves. Like, buddy, you're not as threatening as you think you are. Sorry to say it. Lord. Corridor is all twist. Na Navi, you're just... Yeah, you know, last episode I said that that, uh, that, that, that Moblin guy was Captain Oblivious, like, brother of Captain Obvious. Navi is Captain Obvious. The dynamic duo of Navi and Moblin. Swear. There's the ghost, one of the flames I need, but I can't attack them yet because I need, I need the bow. I know has bow. Another Stalfos. I just fought two of you at once. Like you're not, you're not the hot shot you think you are. Now, that crouch stabbing really is effective on Stalfos. Like it's not even funny. Oh God, there's two more. <laughs> I was trash talking the other one, and then two more showed up. Guys, I know you're mad because you got lost in the Lost Woods, but it's your own fault. It's literally called the Lost Woods. Ow. Ow. I like the game doing that. Ow! I've got fairies, so I'm not super worried about it, but ow! Are you the bow or are you the compass? Wait, that stuff was dropped nuts. I'm replenish my nuts. Okay, I gotta replenish my health. You gotta just stop the, the ungodly beeping. Right. That's the bow. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna replace the ocarina with that. I'm gonna go back into the previous room. I wish I had the compass, I know it's waves left and right, but We all want things, don't we? <laughs> cool, thanks for the arrows that I didn't need yet. But I desperately needed hearts. Big preach. This is not the way I came in. Hi there. Welcome to the party. I know your red your red sibling is supposed to be first, but you know, I kinda took a took a left instead of a right and kinda where we're at now. 
You guys, honestly, though, are kind of the most annoying things to fight. Because you just hit these instances of, you can't hit me. <laughs> kind of a nuisance. If I had to be honest with you. At least, at least you gave me replacement arrows, though. That's very nice of you. Compass? This is the, like, the first time in any Zelda game I've ever been like, please be the compass. I mean, maybe I was like that in my Zelda 1 playthrough, I don't know. A Zelda 1 playthrough parentheses that I didn't finish. <laughs> I don't know what you expected after the first one, buddy. I really don't. Come on. Wow, really? You're a little bit tougher than your sibling. At least you're a little bit better at deflecting damage. There you go. I, I wouldn't say you're smarter, though. That is objectively untrue. There you go. And some free health. Hallelujah. And what have we here? Marky. Always good. Always nice. Always nice to have the tools necessary for progression. At some point, I think I'm going to end up working my way back around to that main chamber because I got to go through one of that that one door that had the the eyeball above it. Ah, I couldn't have come this way even if I wanted to. Fantastic. Love it when a plan comes. Watch for watch for Wallmaster. I am so incredibly aware of Navi. I require more keys. I mean, I go through a door that requires a key just to come to another door that requires another key. Well, I played a game like that once. I can't remember what the name of the game was. You know, speaking of games, I had this thought the other day. This is a random, random, random thought with me. Um, I've been thinking there's like there's types of games that you don't see anymore. And one of the game types that I realized you never really see anymore are like dungeon crawlers. Whether they're like turn-based, like Etrian Odyssey, or like uh, more ARPGs like uh, like Fate. You don't really see those anymore. They're very of their time styles of games. Like so, some games are kind of close to that. Like I guess you could you could probably classify Diablo as a similar genre to Fate. Not quite, but it's like it definitely got a different flavor, but it's a very similar like top-down kind of RPG. I think the only game I've ever played though that's like a like a dungeon when I say a dungeon crawler, I mean a game that's got like one big dungeon and the entire purpose of the game is just get through that one big dungeon. Etri Etrian Odyssey was really cool because like every five floors it would just be a different uh, different biome. Like the first one was like, first it's a forest, and then it's a jungle. It was like, oh, it's a, that's a pretty natural project progression. And then the third one was like an underwater style uh, biome, which was really cool. And then it was like a desert. And if you've ever played Etrian Odyssey 1, the boss, the desert, is the biggest pain in the tail of any boss. 
I think I've ever experienced in a turn-based RPG. Just because it keeps summoning reinforcements that suck. I didn't mean to fall down this hole, by the way. But yeah, I would say the only game I've ever played where it's like a third-person RPG dungeon crawler is like Dark Cloud. And I've never really played much of Dark Cloud. I know I need, and I need to go back to that room I was in that I fell through because that's where the big key was. I know I need, I know I need that. I, I'm aware. <laughs> I'm not paying attention, but I'm also paying attention at the same time. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> but I, would, I would love to see another like uh, just another game, like a third or first person RPG with like a dungeon crawler like that. I guess technically you could consider Skyrim a dungeon crawler. Here, Wallmaster. Looks like I say there better have been a point to me coming in here. This is a that's such a genre of game you just don't see anymore. Like a lot of. Uh, I would say a lot of 2D platformers have fallen by the wayside, but like, it's not true. <laughs> a lot of indie games are 2D platformers. In indie scene really kind of kept that alive. Like arcade style uh, flight flight games, kind of like uh, Star Wars Rogue Squadron. You don't see those anymore. They're all flight sims now, like Elite Dangerous. You know, it's, it's weird. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just kind of talking. I'm kind of filling space because we've already been through this room. <laughs> we've been through these rooms a couple times. Um, I have, like I said in the last video, I've been playing a lot of Skyrim in my spare time, and it's it's weird, but like Sk Skyrim is 13 years old now, and it's still a lot of fun to just play. Like, yeah, it's got its moments of it's being broken or it's kind of doofy in times, but like it's still just a fun game to play. And I wonder if this is just me kind of talking out of my butt, but like, I wonder if games are going to get back to that point where they're just made to be fun to play. Like, you could argue that with Skyrim, but, you know. Or you could argue whether or not that was the case with Skyrim. I feel like it would have been, but, you know. Every, everything nowadays, though, like graphics or trying to tell, like, the most compelling story or something. Like, a compelling story doesn't mean anything if your gameplay sucks. Like, at least if your story sucks and your gameplay is good, you can play the game. Like, I personally don't care. People might hate me for this, but I personally don't care for the story in Final Fantasy X. But I'll admit the, the combat is fire. And then, of course, you have the games that are just, like, it's kind of interconnected. But, like, the... Like, again, you can kind of argue, oh, it's part of the point. But, you know. Like, in Borderlands, some people will argue that the commentary or the dialogue is part of the, part of the experience. And then some people are like, ugh, the dialogue sucks. <laughs> it just kind of, it kind of just depends on what you want out of the game. However you want to play it. Like, you can turn the voice off. Like, I, I never really had too much of a problem with it, but sometimes I just... But it's why I don't... Um, <laughs> dialogue is why I don't stream or do a Let's Play of Borderlands. Because the characters never stop talking. <laughs> like, ever. Where I'm supposed to go. And I've talked about that before. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm trying to commentate here. But no. So, like, I get it. But Borderlands, I feel like, also suffers from... There... And this isn't just applied to Borderlands. There were quite a few games in that era. This is just a random... Another random thought from Nuke Fox. Uh, a lot of games in that era where they peaked at the second game, and every game after it was either objectively trash, or everyone hated every game after the second one. 
because it just like wasn't the second one. <laughs> like with Mass Effect, it makes sense because three was a good game up until the ending because all the writers quit before they finished the game. At least I've been told all the writers quit before they finished the game, which kind of makes sense. Um. And with Borderlands, it kind of... You can't compare 2 to 3. You have to compare 2 to the pre-sequel, because the pre-sequel came immediately afterwards. And I get it, the pre-sequel's kind of weird in places. But it's not, like, a bad game like people think it is. And just because you don't like the whole... low-gravity mechanic, that doesn't make it a bad game. I still enjoyed it. I thought the whole concept of, like, the negative arc of Handsome Jack was pretty cool. Was it as good as 2? No. <laughs> Still wasn't a bad game. There were some other ones that did that. There were quite there were quite a few. There were quite a few. Kinda. Could you consider Sonic 06 to be Sonic Adventure 3? I kinda compare that, but that's kinda not. It's kind of we all know what happened there though. <laughs> Fable was another one. Fable was absolutely another one. Just like, as I, I, I only, I've played Fable. I don't like Fable personally. I played the, all, th all three of them a little bit. I kind of, I kind of got a kick out of three, but one and two were just kind of like, eh. Where the heck am I supposed to go? Ah, west or east? This way. Ah, another, another door thing. Oh, I've already. The heck? I think in Fable 3 it was like the first, well, the first, one of the first games I got for my Xbox was Fable 3. When I first, first got an Xbox 360. And I, I got a kick out of it. I never finished it or did much in it, but I got a kick out of what I did play from it. I just kind of screwed around a little bit. It's funny, Fable 1, I played Fable 1. Fable 1 just has the air of like... <laughs> I'm sorry, people are going to hate me for saying this, I'm, I'm sure. But it has the air of, like, every American-made RPG from that era. And when I say that, it's like, every th like, the lighting's a little bit darker, it, the menu is... Maybe Fable didn't do this, but a lot, a lot of games, American RPGs from that time, the menu was always, like, a scroll. Or, and looked like it was written on yellowed parchment, you know? Where am I going? Okay, there's a... What? Okay, where is the... Where's the part where I have to fight against that Skotola to climb up? Let me, go, let me go to the other side. I have an idea of what I'm supposed to do, but... Yeah, there's, there's always just wasn't just just an era of discrepancies of like the second game being great and the third game being trash. <laughs> Either it was trash or was viewed as trash, I should say. I, I always think that was an interesting time in gaming in gaming history. Just like that time in gaming history where every character had to be dark and edgy. Either either every character, every protagonist had to be dark and edgy, there had to be some dark and edgy character. You know, I think the only character who survived that era was Shadow the Hedgehog. Everyone else kind of died. <laughs> and I think the most egregious example of that was Jack and Daxter. Because there, it made no sense the way they went ahead with Jack and Daxter. Like, like I think Jack and Daxter was the first example of when I thought realized Naughty Dog probably had very weird <laughs> very weird writing tropes. Okay, so there's no there's no point to that at all. Because the first the first Jack and Daxter it's very like like Jack's the silent protagonist. He just looks like you know he just looks like a platformer protagonist. He doesn't he's not any way dark or edgy. It's very cartoony, you know? Then you get to Jack 2 and then everything becomes all dark and 
dystopian and it makes it just makes no sense as to why the, the, the tonal shift it makes no sense and Jack 2 wasn't a bad game Jack 3 was a mess and a half <laughs> but first but the first like three hours of the game running around in the dune buggy like I'm playing Mad Max and after that I was just like you know what I'm not playing this game anymore <laughs> Before anyone uh, tries to defend Naughty Dog at me, I haven't played Uncharted, but I have played The Last of Us, and I liked the first Last of Us until the ending. <laughs> Getting to The Last of Us 1 is like Joel had no character development, he's still just a selfish prick. Like, oh, but he liked Ellie, and I was like, yeah, he was willing to doom the entire world because he couldn't stand to lose someone else. So inherently, that was selfish. Like, oh, we could have had a cure for the zombie virus. Great. Instead, I'm gonna kill everybody. Sorry, this is a very weird topic to be talking about while running through a dungeon in Zelda, but I am lost. Where am I supposed to go? Like, I have absolutely no idea where I'm supposed to be going. Let me, let me go back through the twisty room. Oh, I, ha I have a key now, that's right. I needed a key to go back through the twisty room. Okay. Forgot about that. Started talking and I forgot what I was doing. Wait, I, mi I might like Uncharted, but I haven't played it. I think I have Uncharted 1 for my PS3. I just, I don't know what it is, but I don't like the PS3. <laughs> I don't know why, I have, I've, I like my PS3 better than my Xbox 360, but I just never feel any desire to take out my PlayStation 3 anymore. Like, there's no... there's no will to do that anymore, and I don't know why. <laughs> I think because everything I have on it, I could have just, like, got on my PlayStation 4. I don't, I don't have a whole lot of PS3 exclusives. I don't have my PS4 anymore. In fact, I think everything I have on my PlayStation 3 with the exception of, like, the first Uncharted, I have either on my Xbox or on my, uh, on Steam. <laughs> Except for, like, maybe the Neptunia stuff, I don't know. Okay, so if I go through here... This will go all the way around. And do I go down from here? I don't know if I should if I should drop down from here. I... Let me let me not do that. Let me reset this room. Oh, I thought that would kill you. Get out of here. <laughs> but yeah. Well, but I could play Fate. I think I could play like on stream or something. I haven't played Fate in years. You can still get it on Steam, which is pretty cool, but like I just haven't played it in years. I played, I, I technically beat the first one, because the thing about Fate, if you don't know what Fate is, it's like a top-down, it's a top-down RPG, and there's just one big dungeon in it, like I, like I, I talked about it earlier. There's a big dungeon in it, and you just go. Floor by floor, you just go. And when you start the game up, uh, the game randomly generates, like, a monster on, like, floor 50-something, I think. Or I think the floor just depends... It generates on... Depends on the difficulty you're playing on. And you just gotta kill it, and that's the end of the game. And once you kill it, you can keep going. Like, there's... It's, like, randomly generated or something. Is that, is that randomly generated? Is it procedurally generated? I, I never learned the difference. 
But the the thing about it is it, it, it generates floors to the point where there's like thousands upon thousands upon thousands of floors. Like the devs just like made the enemies and stuff and then just built an algorithm to put it all into one big dungeon. Which is kind of cool if you think about it. Like imagine like Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, but like it's not like turn based and it just goes on for eternity. It's another game I could play, Mystery Dungeon. Explorers of Sky is in fact very hype. Explor Explorers of Sky was my first Mystery Dungeon game, which I wasn't even supposed to get. I wanted Platinum, but my parents couldn't find it, so they got me Explorers of Sky. So they were like, ah, oh, it's Pokemon, he'll like it. And then it, they went just to another store. I guess Happenstance found Platinum. And they were like, ah, oh, we'll just get them both. And I was like, ah, oh, neat. Explorers of Sky is absolutely just a god tier video game if you've never played it. Very good, very fun game, very well written. Exceptionally well written. Like, S Super Mystery Dungeon is a dumpster fire of writing compared to Splurge of the Sky, because... God. I could go on for an hour about how much I hate Super... In fact, I I've talked about this before, but this is funny. When I first played Super Mystery Dungeon, I was just, obl just, just obliviously enjoying it, you know? And then uh, a friend of mine started playing it. He bull rushed past the game, past where I was. And then after he got like so many hours further into the game than I was, he called me and proceeded to rip my ear off for an hour about what a dog shit game it was. And I'm like, dude, I didn't tell you it was a good game. <laughs> I might have said I liked it. I didn't say it was like a great game. <laughs> like, bro went off. And I played the game some more and kind of like took what he said into consideration. And I was like, oh yeah, this writing is poopy. Like I kind of hold to myself that, uh, okay, I'm not going to drop down there. I don't need, I don't need to do that. I kind of hold my own personal, uh, uh, preference for like writing in games. Like my two... Two, two of the top uh, games, in my opinion, as far as like their writing is concerned, are going to be like Explorers of Sky and Mass Effect 2. Like, and one thing you got to understand about writing a good story is you have to write good characters. And that's something both games did very well. Because, you know, Explorers of Sky literally opens up in the very beginning, it opens up with your partner kind of expressing their um, their own character flaw. Like it, point, it points out the character flaw. Very, it's a very relatable character flaw. And they kind of grow past that as the game progresses. And that's that, that's good. That's good writing. Then you have other characters, you know, who kind of have their own growth in there as well. Hopefully not as much. And Mass Effect 2 is all about that. It's all about the squad mates and their stories and their loyalty missions and all that good stuff. Like, it's a very well-written game. People will argue that, like, oh, it's not important to the main story because you don't really affect... It doesn't really affect the whole plot overall. And I'm like, if that's what you think, you've missed the point entirely. Because the point of Mass Effect 2 is so much more than just the Omega 4 relay. And when you when you play like Mass Effect 2 after coming off of Mass Effect 1, like it, it just makes it that much more cool of what a good game it is. Like Mass Effect 1, I don't I don't fully dislike Mass Effect 1, but I will say Mass Effect 1 is <laughs> It's not nearly as well put together as two, I wouldn't say. I like games, man. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very opinionated. I know no one asked. 
but I'm just kind of throwing it out there. And it, it did not sound too harsh. I I did actually really enjoy The Last of Us up until the ending. At the ending, I was like, oh, come on, really? And, I, and I've heard that a lot of people kind of divided on that ending. Like, it's either like, yeah, save Ellie. Or like, no, Joel, what are you doing? You're dooming the world. And I'm kind of in the latter. But I think that's kind of part of the point. There, there is um, a game with a what I would consider to be an irredeemably bad ending. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say what it is because I might end up playing it either uh, in a let's play or on stream. It's a very long game though. So I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to seriously think about that because it is a uh, oof. <laughs> it's a big one, but it, it's just made me so mad. Because it was such a good game. And then I got to the ending and it made absolutely no sense. <laughs> Have you, has anybody else ever experienced that from like a story, like a movie or a book or a game? Hey, last ghost. Woo! Uh, but like a story or a book, a movie, a game, or a TV show or whatever. And like it's so good and then the ending happened. I heard the TV show Lost was a lot like that, but I never watched Lost. I was, I was too young to really care about it. At the time. Ah. I I see, I see. I see your game. You want the arrow, okay, I gotcha. I gotcha. Took me a second to figure out which one was real. I thought they were all gonna, like, attack me or something, and I had to do something about it. My, my, my ghost friend in Christ, you are literally the first Krizoa Shrine from Star Fox Adventures. Stop this. In fact, you're easier than that. I had to get up and do a thing. What's happening? Ah, I'm down here now. Okay. I know I gotta push this. I apologize. I don't remember what I was talking about. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. We'll just go on about our day. Well, if we weren't for the gold school Tola, I'd say this little alcove was useless. There's a treasure chest there. I don't. Oh, there is a treasure. <laughs> I didn't even see it until I looked at the map. Arrows. Great. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I can't move while that's while that's turning. Thing there. Nope. Link's moving all these big, heavy walls and blocks and stuff, and doesn't even need the gauntlets, but, uh... Oh. As soon as we get to one of those, uh... Pillar thingies, nope, we need the gauntlets. Come on, Link. I'm just nitpicking. <laughs> Okay, well, I just pressed the button. Is there another button? Ah? I'm sorry? Don't do this to me. Don't put a puzzle in the last room before the boss. Okay, so that's been pressed. 
I haven't been checking this other side, I'll be real. Uh, okay, let's do this. Probably another switch somewhere. Probably, uh, probably, yeah. The obvious thing that has to happen is a probably. <laughs> So now, I believe there would be one more switch. Be this one back here. And that should be it. Did I get all the ghost gold tolos in this dungeon? I did! Yay! Awesome! I, th I thought I got ended up eventually getting that one I said I need the Scarecrow song for. Alright, boss time. I, I, I love this. I love this little rope. It's like keep Link. Like, Link, you could easily just like lift the rope up <laughs> and walk under that. What is that rope made out of galvanized steel? Like, what is that? <laughs> Oh no. Not flat spikes. Oh, what's up, Ganon? Don't laugh at me. Oh, cool mask, bro. Evil spirit from beyond. Phantom Ganon? Oh, real Ganon doesn't even have the cojones to come fight me? Gotta send his phantom to do it? What a dweeb. See you. You were not correct. Ah, oh, God. Where did you go? Where did you come from? Where did you come from? Where'd you go? Where'd you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? It's you, okay. I see. I see what my mistake was. I understand. Sorry about the beeping, everybody. But I do have fairies in case something happens, so... I'm not super worried about it. That's another fake. You come out the- you come out the picture quick, buddy. I thought he was fake. I couldn't quite see him. It's you. Okay. Ow. Gotta get that timing down. Okay. Yeah. Got a six staff though, bro. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, God, no. Blake, no. Probably should have healed before I came in here, but it's fine. Ow. Oh, wow, that does one whole heart of damage? Jeez. I didn't pay attention to that the first time. It takes Link longer to swing his sword than I would have thought. Oh. Oh, you had, you had another opportunity to... Well, don't I just feel a fool. Wow, you can take some hits, man. Good, good on you. Bro put his skill points into his armor rating. Ow. Oh god, and his destruction magic. Ow. Ow! Oh, 
Stop, stop with the tennis. I don't know how much more tennis I can take. It would have been hilarious if that would have worked. I would have laughed so hard. Sit down. They put up a heck of a fight, I'm not gonna lie. Hey kid, you did quite well. It looks like you may be gaining some slight skill. Only slight though. <laughs> but you have defeated only my phantom. When you fight the real me, it won't be so easy. Uh-huh. What a worthless creation that ghost was. I will banish it to the gap between dimensions. <laughs> Art container? Art container. Really what I do this for. It's off with the heart containers. I wish the Chamber of the Sages was a place I could, like, actually physically go to. Kind of get why it's not, but still. Uh, what's up, Saria? Thank you, because of you I could awaken as a sage. I am Saria, sage of the Forest Temple. Yay! We did the thing, guys. I always believed you would come, because I know you. No, you don't have to explain it to me. Because it's destiny that you and I can't live in the same world. I will stay here as the Forest Sage and help you. Now please, take this medallion. Oh, it's weird. They give you these medallions, but they don't do anything. It's more than, like recognition that you beat the boss and clear the temple. Like, I know when you get to Ganon's Tower, there's like the different rooms with like the different elemental locks on them. But like, sorry, I will always be your friend. Yay! Um, but like the sage seems to be the like you just need the light arrows for that though. Well, I, I guess. You need all the medallions together and all the sages freed so you can, uh, build the bridge to Ganon's Tower. All about the rainbow bridge, bro. What you got there, Link? Well, hi there! Hi there, I'm the Deku Tree Sprout. Because you and sorry I broke the curse on the forest temple, I can grow and flourish. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. You give me a pearl in another game. Have you seen your old friends? None of them recognized you with your grown-up body, did they? It's because the Kokiri never grow up. Even after seven years, they're still kids. Like, is this the... Does this sprout grow into the Deku Tree from Wind Waker? I imagine timeline-wise, it probably is the same Deku Tree. You must be wondering why only you have grown up. Well, as you might have already guessed, you are not a Kokiri, you're actually a Hylian. Yeah, I kind of figured that out. I'm happy to finally reveal this secret to you. How do you know this? You were just born. Some time ago, before the King of Hyrule unified this country, there was a fierce war in our world. One day, to escape from the fires of the war, a Hylian mother and her baby boy entered this forbidden forest. The mother was gravely injured. Her only choice was to entrust the child to the Deku Tree, the guardian spirit of the forest. The Deku Tree could sense that this was a child of destiny, whose fate would affect the entire world. So we took him into the forest. So what if it had just been some random kid? Dekatru would have been like, nah, beat him to the wolves. <laughs> like, what the heck? After the mother passed away, the baby was raised as a Kokiri, and now finally the day of destiny has come. Do 
You are a Hylian, and we're always bound to leave this forest. And now you have learned your own destiny. So you know what you must do. That's right, you must save the land of Hyrule. Now, Link, break the curses on all of the temples and return peace to Hyrule. Okay. I, li I like how... I think only the Forest Temple and the Fire Temple are the ones that actually have noticeable repercussions. Because, like, when you... Well, I guess when you clear the Water Temple, Lake Hylia fills up again, but, but, but Zoro's Domain stays, stays frozen. <laughs> that doesn't help the Zoras. Um... Do I need anything? I can do some bombs. This, this guy sell bombs? Do you sell explosives? Do you children sell explosives? You do not. I will leave then. Like the Shadow Temple and the Spirit Temple don't really do anything. I guess you saved Naburu. But I mean, literally it. it didn't do anything for the Gerudos. And the Shadow Temple. I, I guess... Killed Bongo Bongo, but aside from breaking out of the well, it doesn't really do anything. Oh well, what do you do? Anyway, I'm gonna go back to... Uh, back to the Temple of Time and see if I can finally become Kid Link again, because I gotta get this... I don't want to forget to get the Scarecrow song. I somehow I have... I have remembered. Let's go, Epona. Onward. And for the most part, it's kind of weird to say this. There's really no need for Epona for the most part, because you can just because you gotta go to Zora's domain, and well, I, I guess you can't go from. Zoro's domain to the Lake Hylia's adult link because the path's frozen. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry, opponent, I didn't mean to talk talk smack about you. I would very much though like to get the prelude of light. Ugh, pardon me. Cheek, I did the thing. Can I have the prelude of light now? You destroyed the wicked creatures that haunted the temple and awakened the sage. But there are still other sages who need your help. In order to awaken all the other sages, you must become even more powerful. You must travel over mountains, underwater, and even through time. If you want to return to your original time, return the Master Sword to the pedestal of time. By doing this, you will travel back in time seven years. Ugh. Sorry, I keep yawning. <laughs> the time will come when you will need to have to return here quickly. I will teach this to you for when that time comes. Song to return you to the Temple of Time, the Prelude of Light. I like how there's no extra notes after the do 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 like some of the other songs. It's just that and that's it. As long as you hold the Ocarina of Time and the Master Sword, you hold time itself in your hands. Link will meet again. Yeah, I know you have other songs to teach me. Your fancy burst of light. Get out of here.
All right. So we're back as Young Link again, and let's see, I gotta go get the Scarecrow song. What else do I have to do as Kid Link? Uh, or at least that I have to do right now. North Domain, Rico Village. And there's, there's something else I'm wondering, too. Um, do I have to do the dungeons in order? Because it's fire, water, shadow, uh, spirit. Well, looking at this, the spirit temple comes before the shadow temple. But do I need the hover boots in the spirit temple? Because I know I need the megaton hammer in the spirit temple. I remember that, and the long shot would be useful. So you definitely want to do water and fire before you do spirit. But could you do shadow before? I don't know. It seems it would seem weird to me that the world's kind of open like that, but you can't really do anything until you get the requisite requisite stuff. I probably could just go to Zoro's domain, but we'll figure that out later. Uh. Again, I don't know this game <laughs> enough to know all of the ins and outs of what I need to do. I could do the mask thing, but we're going to save that for later. I'm not super worried about it. Also, I wanted to do a thing with the Kaku. I forgot to do that, but we'll save that for the next video. Because I got to go back to Kakariko anyway to get up to Donango's Cavern to get those Skulltolas. So that'll be fun. We will do that next time. That's going to go ahead and do it for this episode, everybody. We got past the Forest Temple. I think we're making pretty good progress so far. Thank you everybody so much for watching. You enjoyed it. Leave a like to let me know. Leave a comment. Let me know what you're thinking about this video or this video series so far, I should say. Uh, subscribe for more coming your way very soon. I gotta remember all the plugs. <laughs> Just recorded another uh, another video like three hours ago. <laughs> uh, more of this coming your way, and I think that is everything. I am honestly there was something else I wanted to say, and I forgot what it was. But <laughs> if it was important, I would have remembered, I guess. But anyway, thank you all again, and I will see you all in the next video.